Welcome back to the channel. Our assignment today is to restore the red color on these interior faded parts with this particular A-pillar trim as our reference. No problem, right? Except that we also have two new sun visors that need to match the red interior. So this takes our job from the standard difficulty to the seemingly impossible. Why? What is the problem with reds? And how do we solve it? Well, let's find out. To begin, let's establish our target color. This 130 red appears to be our closest candidate. So let's start there. So how might these other red pigments play in? This is the 131 true red. It's less yellow. It's also darker in value. Now remember, in keeping our intense red, we can only move in one of two directions, either towards the yellow or towards the blue. So reds are often described as yellowish or bluish. This pigment is scarlet. It's very light in value, but also very yellow, and we probably won't need that. This is 136 maroon. I don't use it too much, but it's got a lot of blue in it. So if we need addition of blue, that will be our go-to. This pigment is called bright red. It's very light in value and quite blue. I don't foresee using it, but let's keep it in mind as a modifier. So starting with our 130 red, I added some 131 true red and some 136 maroon. That's our test on the right. Obviously we need more blue, so we'll add a bit more maroon. The reason for adding maroon as opposed to just adding blue is we make a more gradual change. We contribute to the red while adding just a small amount of blue at a time. And since we're getting a bit dark, we'll add some white, just a few drops sparingly at a time, not overdoing the white. And that little bit of adjustment puts us right on the money. Now, enhancing the already red but faded panels is no problem. But what about those black sun visors? Well, to illustrate the dilemma we face, I have prepared a mock-up here. From leftover leather dye, I've selected two colors that could be used as primer colors. First, a light yellow beige and a light gray. The black will represent our new visors. I'm going to do my best to give equal coverage to all three of these bases. A few light coats at first and then a couple heavy coats. It's easy to see that our primer color has a great impact on our target color. I'm going to move the camera a bit and try to get a better focus. And then we'll do some comparisons. We can see right away that even with the correct target red color, achieving our target over black is impossible because of two factors. One is that the red paints are infamously translucent. So light passing through the red also reaches the substrate. And number two, in this case, the black substrate absorbs all wavelengths of light, so you don't see much color at all here. Now looking at our two primer choices, it's evident that they also have different effects on our target color. It appears to me that the gray primer contributes the best results. However, the light yellow beige 
is somewhat relevant as well. So you might be asking, can we combine the two primer colors to achieve the perfect primer for our specific target color? And if you ask that question, you have discovered the holy grail of working with reds. So in this case, I've made a judgment to use a 75% of the gray primer and 25% of the light yellow beige. So I'm going and mixing them in a ratio of three to one, gray to beige. One of the reasons that these primers work so well is that white is a very dense pigment. You'll know when you pick up a bottle of white pigment that it's heavier than the others. So it's more opaque and prevents any light from reaching our black vinyl. Also, white tends to reflect all wavelengths, giving a truer reveal of our target color. So I have already thoroughly scrubbed and cleaned all of the pieces and they're all prepped and I'm getting ready now for the first very light coat here of red and I've noticed some black spots. These black spots on this panel will continue to be black of course unless I prep them with our light primer. So you might ask, do I have to go through this every job where I need to change a piece to red? Yes, it's the only way. But you can be assured that spending a few minutes developing a custom primer color will save you hours of gnashing your teeth and wanting to quit your job. And you'll charge for the extra time too. I tell my customers that for reds, I will charge two to three times more than for other colors. Because reds are translucent, I will plan on a heavier pigment concentration in my mix and also extra coats. So I'm gonna make up about twice the amount of paint I would normally. We have to figure the extra time and materials and application of our custom made primer. So the additional charge for reds is not arbitrary. Physics demands it. And our end result shows how the theory works out in practice. The beauty is that we have taken the seemingly impossible and made it easy, interesting, and fun to accomplish. Thanks for watching.